let's get right started with news you can use. First thing I'm going to talk about is uh, from the land of fruits and nuts out here in California. Uh, one of the latest trends, this is just kind of for fun uh, type thing. Uh, there is a movement to give essentially human rights, sentient being rights to Alexa and Siri. Um, if, you, if you have any idea what that means, or you don't have any idea what that means, you can go back and watch Star Trek Next Generation, an episode done in like 1989 or 1990, where they uh, uh, had a debate about whether Data, who was a, uh, essentially a robot, had the rights of a human being. So anyway, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but usually these kind of goofy things start out here. And this is one of the things I read recently where they're uh, attempting to give some level of humanity to artificial intelligence, namely in, in the form of uh, uh, Siri and Alexa. And so be careful what you say uh, and how you treat uh, these. I'm not sure what you call them. He, she, it's. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the pronoun is, but uh, we'll, we'll keep you apprised of how that goes and uh, what that all means for you and your business going forward. All right. On to some serious business now. First thing we're talking about is Open Door. Um, and we kind of predicted this a year or so ago with regard to Zillow. Open Door got slammed yesterday by the Federal Trade Commission. $62 million fine uh, if they agree to it. And here is uh, what was published yesterday in the proposed uh, fine and penalties to Open Door. Uh, this, and this comes from the Federal Trade Commission Bureau of Consumer Protection. Open Door promised to revolutionize the real estate market that built uh, its and built its business using, but actually built its business using old-fashioned deception about how much consumers could earn from selling their houses on their platform. So essentially, what they're saying is they went out and told people, "You sell to Open Door, and you're going to make a lot more money than if you were to go out and list it or sell to an investor." And that was just patently false. They made the implication, or at least that this is what the claim is, they, they implied to their potential sellers of homes, the people they bought homes from, that uh, all they were getting were some fees that were listed on the closing statement. And in fact, the majority of the money they made was the difference between what they paid the seller of the home and what they sold it for ultimately. And they made most of their spread that way. But uh, the claim by the FTC is they were deceptive in their business practices. They got hammered. I would expect this this to happen to some of the other eye buyers out there. Once again, the, you know they they use the computer ate my homework excuse. Uh, you know the computer artificial intelligence made these decisions as to what to pay, what to buy. It's a unique concept. I expect this legal theory to actually eventually become a case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, because people are saying, it's not my fault, it's not my job, uh, my artificial intelligence did it, uh, they created prices, they negotiated, I had nothing to do with it. Of course, this is Facebook and Amazon, they, this is written for them, essentially, uh, where everybody is abdicating personal responsibility and saying it is the sentient beings uh, that are making these decisions and responsibilities. So we'll see if Open Door agrees with the penalty fine. Uh, disagrees, that kind of thing, before it actually becomes the force of law, uh, which is what happened when one of these consent decrees actually gets accepted. So we'll keep you up to date. Once again, I would expect Zillow to be in the same spot down the road, if not further problems, uh, because of the fact that I believe they engaged in a pump and dump scheme to artificially inflate the market prices in certain markets, specifically Phoenix and Las Vegas. All right, that's it for Open Door. Now let's talk about we always talk about markets going down, what's going to happen over the next couple of years. But there was an article that came out day before yesterday from Moody's, and it was published across a couple of different fronts, Fortune Magazine and Yahoo Finance. And it's very interesting because, and I, I trust Moody's, I, they don't really have a dog in the fight, so to speak. Um, they go out there and they do their own research. They have concluded that between the fourth quarter of 2022, and the fourth quarter of 2024, uh, about half of the small, uh, mid to small markets that they follow, um, these would be of the top 500 markets, about 100 of them, maybe 75 or so are big. Big would be New York, Houston, Dallas, San Francisco, Los Angeles. 
smaller as would be the next step down in terms of population, that type of thing. So basically a little over 400 of the 500 or so, 480 um, markets they evaluated, they're saying that about half of those uh, are going to go up during that two year period of time and half are gonna go down. Um, I'm gonna give you that specific list. If you guys have something to write with, uh, this will be a, a good thing to follow if you're looking to focus on a specific area. Now, once again, notice the cities I'm gonna give you all have smaller populations. So whether they're gonna go up or go down, they're expected that uh, you know all of the increases are going to be in these smaller populations. By smaller, I'm talking less than 400,000, probably less than 300,000 population. That's where that's where the game's going to be played over the next couple of years. That's where if there is some um, resistance to prices dropping, in other words, prices are going to be stable, solid, going up. It's going to be in this market. By the way, of the big markets, the top 75 or 80, whatever it is. 100% of them are going to be going down or have already gone down. So, and just for recap purposes, the top falling markets in the U.S., the top big markets right now, number one, Boise, most overvalued, number two, Salt Lake City, number three, Sacramento. And then below that is San Francisco and some other uh, cities in here, especially in California where they're dropping like a rock, Los Angeles, for example. So um, don't be fooled by what, you see people like Open Door and Zillow telling you, you know, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. That is essentially the chicken little syndrome in reverse. All right, going back to the top, and they've actually said there's 210 markets that are going to go down, and there's about 204 that are going to go up. Let me give you the worst of the worst, the ones that are going to go down most in this midsection. Start with the 10th and, and work our way up the first. Palm Bay, Florida, about 8% drop. Missoula, Montana. Reno, Nevada, Fort Lauderdale, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, Ocala, Florida, Cape Coral, Florida, Spokane, Washington is second on the list in terms of biggest drop. And the biggest drop is going to be an area called Punta Gorda, Florida. It's where the villages uh, are located. So uh, they're expecting uh, it on a pure statistical basis, about 13% drop. A realistic basis could be about a third. So a house that was selling for, uh, let's say 500,000, 600,000 could drop to four in that particular scenario. All right, now let's look at the, the top 400, uh, 204 markets of these smaller mid-sized markets are gonna be going up. Once again, starting from 10, going up to one. Uh, in 10th place, Danville, Illinois. 6.3% uh, increase is projected. Valladosta, Georgia, Farmington, New Mexico, then comes Columbus, Georgia, Hartford, Connecticut, actually the only thing in the Northeast uh, at all is Hartford, Connecticut, Augusta, Georgia in uh, fourth, uh, uh, fifth place, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, New Bern, North Carolina, uh, and uh, number two, is Casper, Wyoming. Okay, very unique because some of the other areas are going to be dropping. And uh, the, the best market, the market is projected to have the biggest increase in the next two years, starting the fourth quarter this year, is going to be Albany, Georgia. So there's a lot in Georgia that's going up, a lot in Florida that's going down. Uh, and then there's a few spotty areas. North Carolina looks pretty good, those types of things. So uh, once again, if you're going to focus on a specific market, I would not focus on a large market. I would focus on one of these mid-sized markets uh, to see what you can do. I think you're going to have you know, a, a much better opportunity uh, to make a profit in those markets. Of course, the way we teach the business, you can make money in any market, any time. Now, we're going to look at the heat map here that actually is going to put up. That's going to show you uh, across the country where things are overvalued and where there is some opportunity for price increase. In other words, where they will go up in price. So anything that is in the red orange colors here, you can see is overvalued. So basically the entire West Coast and Arizona, Arizona is vastly overvalued. Uh, basically it's, it is what we call the inner mountain region or anything West of the Rockies uh, is overvalued. So everything out here is overvalued. Uh, some areas of Texas, um, and let's see here, and then you see Florida is uh, overvalued. And there's some some spots there. Uh, Tennessee is looking to be overvalued. A couple of their markets. 
everybody and their brother fled to Memphis, Nashville, places like that, and that has overvalued the market. And then a little bit more overvalued up in uh, New England and right at the, the border uh, with Canada in, uh, in Minnesota up there. Um, and now the blue, on, on the other hand, are undervalued markets. This is primarily where a lot of the people are, are going, are projected to move to. So we've all talked about uh, the last uh, couple of years, California has lost residents. Um, literally, we've lost, uh, you know, it's a millions, millions plus per year, out of 40 million population to lose a million and a half people leaving California a year. That's a pretty significant deal. That's three and a half, four percent of the population is leaving. It's happened two, three years in a row now, uh, and it continues to happen today. Um, there's very few people moving into California, for example. So where are they moving? Well, look at those blue spots. So if you want to, once again, hunker down and you want to get into an area that is going to be rising over the next two, three, four years, uh, I would look at some of those blue areas. I think those are the the, the least uh, overvalued or the most undervalued, however you want to look at that. And that would be a good place to plant your flag if you want to work on a specific area. Once again, the way we teach the business, uh, we still believe that the best concept, the best way to go is to focus on a complete virtual national basis. In other words, the concept is if somebody had a uh, $30,000 check sitting there for you, and you had, you had to pick it up by tomorrow night, unfortunately, 1,700 miles away, would you figure out a way to get there to get that free $30,000 check? And the answer is absolutely. We'll climb, crawl, ride a bike, get on a plane, take a bus, train, whatever. Uh, but we would figure out, we'd all figure out a way to go get that money. And that's what it is. That's what it's like when you do this thing virtually. Um, you could, you do a national campaign and Facebook will send you a lead in East Overshoe, Iowa, and next thing you know, there's a ton of money there. In the meantime, if you're focusing just down the street from where you live, uh, the chances are that uh, you, you're not going to have that same opportunity you would if you look on a national basis. So uh, once again, I, I always encourage everybody to focus on national campaigns. Now, with that said, and, and in the interest of disclosure, if you are in the rehab business, I would suggest focusing on one area. Now, you can focus on multiple areas, uh, but... You know, in order to be effective in the rehab business, you really have to uh, build a system. And in order to build a system, it's really only worth your time if you can do multiple deals. So if you're going to focus on uh, purely the seller finance transactional engineering, we used to call it creative finance portion of the market, I'd suggest doing it national and virtual. If you're going to focus on rehab, I would suggest doing it on a specific local area, but also doing it virtual. In other words, I would never encourage anybody to go spend time looking at their rehab. I don't do that. Haven't done it since 2009. It's a waste of time. Your next deal, only two things in this business you need to be doing if you're in that rehab portion of the business, actually in any portion of the business, is you need to be buying property and you need to find the money. And those are the two things that you get paid for. Everything else is just an opportunity to lose money. So you, you need to be, and notice in that list was not going and looking and seeing how my rehab project is done and how my uh, contractor has clustered the deal up. So anyway, that is, um, that's kind of my news you can use for today. Uh, keep all that stuff in mind. As always, if you guys have questions, don't hesitate to ask us here or on your various Facebook groups.